if you're a new player to rise of kingdoms and you're looking to build your account all around archers then this is the video for you especially if you are a free-to-play player or a low spender this is of course the third and final episode of this mini series that we've been doing throughout the week where we go over each of the troop types and I give you guys my thoughts and opinions and the best upgrade order for your commanders for that troop type as well as what the best civilization is the best city skins and the best upgrade order for your equipment and iconic tiers and we'll also touch a little bit on whether or not I think free-to-play players should go the Archer route or not and what the pros and cons actually are but first what's going on guys cheers this is 64 ounces of black coffee I'm kidding I would actually die anyway let's talk about what it means to be a main for the Archer troop type okay and I went over this in my cavalry video and if you guys missed that or the infantry video of course go ahead and check them out on the channel the links will be in the description below and consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on more rise of kingdoms content and drop a thumbs up while you're down there it's free and it actually helps out the channel a ton but what it means to be a main of a troop type in my opinion and especially if you are a free-to-play player or a low spender is building two armies that focus all around a specific troop type and then having one army that is supporting it from each of the other troop types so in total a four army build in this case it would be two armies for archers one supportive army for infantry and one supportive army for cavalry and this is because there are so many systems in the game that could potentially bottleneck you from building a full five army lineup that really you just want to focus on fighting with the most powerful armies that you can with the best equipment and the best iconic upgrades and the best armaments and all that stuff you don't want to have a fifth march that's running around with blue equipment and horrible armaments it's just going to fill up your hospital really quickly and especially if you're free to play player really high hospital bills obviously mean that you're not going to be able to fight for that long in kvk so just focus on building the four most effective armies that you can with a focus on archers which we're going to talk about in this video but let's talk about whether or not free-to-play players should even go down the archer route at all and personally i think that this is probably the least favorable choice for free-to-play players now that herman prime is in the game he's super powerful and he also gives you some march speed that they really desperately needed for the archers it's not as bad as it was a few months ago but realistically some of the most powerful archers in the open field are very very slow and a lot of these archers feel very squishy when you're fighting in pvp you feel like you really need to have a lot of the best gear for these commanders that's one of the things that i hear a ton from you guys in the comments that if you're gonna run an archer march you really want to have like a majority of your equipment be legendary a lot of times players run the six piece dragon's breath set we're going to talk about that later in the video but it does feel very hard for free-to-play players to play as archers effectively however what I will say archers do have the easiest or at least I should say the simplest transition into season of conquest from a commander perspective we're going to also talk about that in just a moment so archers I think for new players they kind of thrive in the early game you have a really easy and logical transition into the late game and into season of conquest or at least a more logical transition than there were for cavalry and infantry but once you get to that late game a lot of the really powerful commanders really rely on being supported by having a really good gear and spreading out some march speed to make them a little bit faster and because of that I feel like archers might not necessarily be the best troop type for free to play players although like I said before it is definitely a little bit more doable now so with that being said let's just get right into this let's go ahead and start with the best civilization that you should be playing with as an archer main and I'm gonna sound like a broken record here comparing this video to the last two but really the answer is the same as the previous two episodes and and that is Germany if you are in the off season that is in between KVKs if you're just farming Germany especially as a free to play player 10% action point recovery is the best choice and best stat that you can get from any single civilization because you get a lot of your value from exchanging those action points for defeating barbarian forts or chaining barbarians in the open field and then when it comes to actual PvP Ottoman Empire is absolutely the best choice for open field PvP for archers hands down and in fact it's actually better for archers than it is in the previous two videos because the Ottoman Empire has that special unit for archers specifically and it has the archer health increased by five percent the march speed and skill damage are good for all of your armies and so really like Ottoman Ottoman Empire it's good for all troop types but it's especially good for archers and so there's like this is an open and shut case okay if you're going into PvP you're going into fighting Ottoman Empire is your choice when it comes to city skins we're going to follow the same logic that we have been in these previous videos and that is getting five percent bonus health for your archers in exchange for some amount of attack that is reduced 
from some other troop type so in my opinion i feel like losing infantry attack makes the least difference out of anything so in this case moment of celebration in my opinion would be a contender for the best city skin in the epic tier at least for an archer player another really great choice would be easter party again you get five percent archer health and you lose five percent cavalry attack now of course i'm recording this in january but we are going to see easter in just a couple of months so perhaps you'll be able to get your hands on this so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that but realistically if you can't get your hands on one of these city skins then just use whatever epic city skin you can get your hands on that has some bonus to archer stats and then when it comes of course to the legendary city skins we are going to touch on twilight falls once again this is a legendary city skin that you can guaranteed get your hands hands on here it says that you get it from season one of kvk but you can also get it from the season of conquest shop for 650,000 coins and this is going to be just the best open field pvp city skin at least at the time of recording this because you get five percent skill damage which is going to be amazing for your archers but it's also going to be great for your supporting armies of infantry and of cavalry as well and you lose 10 percent infantry attack and like i said before infantry attack is kind of the stat that i am most okay with losing anyway and so twilight falls is basically a must-have for archers because as you're going to see in this video their skill damage is insane okay now let's jump into the commander upgrade order and of course we're going to start with the pre kvk and kvk1 commanders that you should be focusing on and when it comes to archers you really only have a, a few choices here i think the best epic archer in the game realistically herman is going to be the best choice for pvp when it comes to actually dealing damage that's strictly because his single target damage is very high for an epic commander at least and you have a two second silence here plus a 100 rage reduction the active skill on herman is easily what makes him the best choice here but also you get some march speed and a little bit of attack which is really really nice and the fourth skill here gives you 10 percent more normal damage and a 10 percent chance to gain rage so you have a rage engine built in realistically herman is great and you're probably gonna pair him with kusunoki as the secondary kusunoki has a really nice cleanse on his active skill and also a decent aoe but unfortunately it does tick over time he gives you 30 percent of archer stats that you care a lot about as an epic commander and a 10 percent chance for more damage over time basically a little bit of a bleed effect here you could also consider running herman primary with sun tzu secondary if you wanted to throw an even better aoe behind your herman this also has a rage engine for you which is really nice and your herman's going to take 10 percent less damage plus a 20 percent bonus to his skill damage which is already very high so sun tzu very versatile as you can tell by these videos you can kind of throw him in anywhere obviously he is an infantry commander but he really can be used anywhere and then finally emotive is probably i sorry if i'm pronounced that wrong but he's probably one of the best supportive epic commanders in the game and he does happen to be an archer commander so insanely powerful debuff on the active skill here five enemy troops take 30 percent more damage and lose 50 rage per second for three seconds which is crazy so he does have to be the secondary for this to work but if you are looking for a very supportive option then you can run herman with emotive as well now if you are watching this video as somebody who spends money in the game then you might be considering el cid or thutmose and if you have the choice between the two thutmose is definitely the better choice he is an insanely powerful commander from the gold keys 99 percent of players should not be putting their universal sculptures into thutmose because you're really not going to use him in the late game but in the early game he's definitely better than El Cid in my opinion and if you are a free-to-play player who gets really lucky with the most maybe you'll get some of his skills for free just by opening up the gold keys now with all the beginner stuff out of the way which legendary commander should you start to put your sculptures into and you guessed it it's not other than Richard again we talked about this in every other video but Richard comes around on the Wheel of Fortune very early in your Rise of Kingdoms journey and getting his first skill to five and just unlocking the rest of these at just a single skill point is a very cheap investment i think it's 50 sculptures to get this skill to five and this is just going to be a very tanky legendary commander that you're going to use basically for the rest of the game when it comes to pve content so chaining barbarians okay and using him as a tank in things like sunset canyon lost canyon golden kingdom all that stuff richard is definitely going to be very useful for you you're going to get a lot of value out of those 50 sculptures but 
again do not take him past that point it's not worth it he's not great for pvp especially in the late game so yeah i think you guys get the drill now right after richard you are gonna have access to e song Ye. now with e song Ye, i think if you are an archer main player then e song Ye makes the most sense for you out of any other troop type now i've talked extensively in previous videos about how i feel like e song Ye isn't a great investment anymore but first of all if you are a hardcore player who has multiple farm accounts and you are grinding every single day for multiple hours then e song Ye, as an archer player is almost certainly worth expertising still i think he's still a great commander for archer players and and also if you really want something to work on in the early game isong ye makes the most sense and you can fit him very nicely into a two army build even in the late game for free to play players so this is what i mean earlier i talked about how archer players have a very logical and simple progression into season of conquest that makes a little bit more sense than it did for infantry and for cavalry so if you're looking for an early game investment and you want to get isong Ye, i think he is still a viable choice for archer mains if you can be really patient and like not fight for the first couple of kvks then then I guess you know you could you could just save all your sculptures until season three of KBK and that's when you're gonna start to get access to some of the late game uh, like super powerful season of conquest commanders okay these are far and above much better than Isong Ye but I think you still can use them as an archer player why is that well when you get him expertise he has a five target circular AOE of 1700 one of the best AOEs in the game plus he gets a 50 percent skill damage bonus on the fourth skill and he has a built-in rage engine plus he gives you a nice bonus to archer attack which is where you know for your infantry mains and for your cavalry mains like you, you kind of just subbed him in for a little bit but you can make a little bit more use out of him as an archer main player and also he does have a museum relic you can get the double relic here and it's actually quite good 20 percent defense five percent more skill damage which is nice but just keep in mind that isong Ye does get outclassed as soon as you hit season of conquest and we're going to talk about that later as you move into season two of kvk you're going to get access to tamiris from the mightiest governor and edward of woodstock in the wheel of fortune both these commanders if you're a free-to-play player neither of these commanders matter to you at all okay i'm gonna keep it simple just skip to Myris, skip edward you're not gonna regret that at all with that being said isong a is the only choice that you have in the early game okay so if you can be super patient you don't have to invest in anything until you get to season three of kvk and in that time you're gonna focus on getting your city hall to 25 you're gonna focus on getting your vip up to at least vip 10 if you can get to vip 12 that would be really really good because that's when you start to get more sculptures every single day and you also want to focus on getting as much progress as you can to tier five units in your in your technology okay that's a lot of stuff to keep you busy for the first couple of months in rise of kingdoms and your main goal should be to save up at least 570 legendary commander sculptures when you get to season three of kvk and if you're a little bit short on that that's fine we'll talk about that in just a second but keep in mind that the archer wheel of fortune i believe is the final wheel of fortune that you get access to during your first kvk3 so archers get their best commanders last which is definitely unfortunate for that very first kvk3 but there are some exceptionally good archers that you'll get access to once that wheel does come around and you will want to spin and unlock for some of these really great commanders in the early game if you got isong Ye, then you can run him with herman prime as the secondary that's like kvk like one and two like that's something that you could consider it's you know you got to be really careful especially as a free-to-play player so please i'm not saying that this is like an insane march i'm just saying like that's pretty much all you could do eventually you'll have some uh level of proficiency on your ethel fled or maybe your mehmet if you got super lucky you know with some of these gold keys but realistically you know you probably won't have them at 5511 anytime soon it'll probably take you like a year to get them there so just keep that in mind but once you hit season three of kvk let's go ahead and assume that you did get isong a the first thing i'm going to ask you is do you have those 570 legendary commander sculptures if you do then bench isong a i know i know i know but here's the thing you're going to get access to juge leung and you're also going to get access to herman prime okay and if you have 570 sculptures you can get a 5511 juge leung which is better than isong a and you can get a 5551 herman prime and boom you have already begun building your best in slot march this is the single best archer march in the entire game right now you get leong primary with herman prime secondary and you will be popping off if you're short on sculptures then 
here's something to consider if you have the Isongye, which would be a reason why you would be short on sculptures is because he takes 690 by himself then you have two options first of all you could go for the 5511 Juge Leong with the YSG secondary and this only costs 190 sculptures this is if you're really low on sculptures you can go with this here's my warning this is such a slow army that it is almost unbelievable how slow this is in the open fields if you are caught out of position you are instantly dead okay however until that point you're going to pop off insane amounts of aoe skill damage which is exactly what you're going to love doing with archers okay so this is a very cheap build for you know i say cheap meaning the ysg is a sunk cost from earlier the cheap build being a 5511 uh Leong. alternatively if you have 380 legendary commander sculptures you could consider going for herman prime before you go for julia leong and get into 5551. What this is going to do is you put Herman Prime as the primary YSG secondary, you hide him. Okay, you hide your YSG. Typically, you guys got to know this your YSG, you don't want him to be primary. Okay, anyone who sees YSG, they're just going to assume that it's a free to play player, that it's a new player, that it's a weak player. They're just going to target you and you're going to be dead instantly. Okay, that's probably still going to be the case for Herman Prime because he is very strong. But realistically, I think Herman Prime will blend in slightly better. That's just my opinion. And the reason that you could consider going for Herman Prime first and only if you have YSG g right like if you don't have ysg at all then obviously juge leong is your is your first investment okay uh, but if you do have the ysg then the herman prime actually gives you the march speed that you really need for for ysg and it actually he has more march speed than even somebody like Boudica prime for example which we're going to talk about in just a minute so like that this really helps him out and also you have an aoe skill damage bonus on your herman prime which obviously benefits both himself and also ysg he also has an insane skill damage bonus you get more stats from him and prime so there's just like there's a lot of synergy here i think that this build this 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 pairing is still very squishy so please keep that in mind but it because he's much faster than the juge leong i think you're gonna have a better experience going in and out of fights with this pairing if you have the ysg if you don't have the ysg or if you can like i said earlier get the uh 5511 Juge Leong then you're going to go this route from here you are going to expertise the Juge Leong I think that he is such a powerful commander he's one of the best open field commanders in the game right now literally the only downside of him is he's slow everything else on his kit is like unbelievably broken he has a even stronger circular AoE than YSG plus it's got a debuff plus he's got 30 percent archer health plus he's got so many other stats and ways to deal damage he's insane okay he is insane then you'll get Herman Prime 2555 one if you didn't already and you could pretty much leave him there for now but I do think that as an archer main you probably will eventually want to expertise your Herman Prime I think that he's going to be in the meta for a very long time because as a supportive commander he's insane but also he has a half circle 2000 AoE like it's kind of obvious that like he's going to be super powerful for a while I don't think you're going to regret the expertise on him because his expertise is going to cause him to occasionally pop off additional active skills which is just free damage it's insane damage it's relatively infrequently given how slow he applies poison all on his own but it's still bonus damage which is nice and you'll be a little bit tankier with that fourth skill at five from there i'm going to recommend you guys actually build an infantry army okay we talked about this in uh, obviously in every video so far but Scipio prime primary with liu che secondary is one of the best if not the best open field pvp army in the game right now it just pumps out insane amounts of skill damage they both have march speed they both have attack defense cpo has a small amount of health there's just the debuff on cpo is insane right especially as a primary like it's it's crazy okay you're going to be getting some amount of blueprints for your infantry gear anyway you're going to get some armaments for infantry anyway so you will want to build an infantry army eventually and i think that this is probably the best choice that you can go for after you've built your best army that you could possibly build you could start off with a 5551 cpo prime or if you're really low on sculptures you could do 5511 but really 5551 is nice then for your liu che i would say 5515 or if you can't get that then 5551 or however the skills land the last two is kind of interchangeable and then eventually you will want to expertise this pair it's so good next you have a choice of building a cavalry army or you could build your second archer march and i think which option you go with is going to depend on where your equipment is okay can you actually build a second army's worth of gear 
right now at that point and the answer is probably no and so i'm gonna recommend going towards cavalry now keep in mind if you could do the archers you could do the archers that's fine but i'm gonna say you're probably gonna want to go with nevsky joan this is a pair that we've talked about for literally years now nevsky primary joan secondary 5551 five, Nevsky is the minimum like get in point and then 5115 Joan is your minimum entry point for her you're going to need to probably use to use some skill resets on her if you can get them they're extremely rare for free to play you'll probably only get one or two a gear eventually you'll probably want to expertise Nevsky and then Joan of Arc can stay at 5115 or if you got unlucky you could do 5515 five, or whatever the configuration is that you get her first and fourth skill to five you can leave her there you do not need to expertise Joan of Arc Prime okay it's it's a waste of sculptures her third skill is not that useful and her expertise is not probably worth the investment from there you're going to build your second archer march and again you could build this before or after the cavalry depends on how your account is looking for me I would actually recommend if you have the YSG grab the Boudicca Prime okay get Boudicca Prime to 5551 and leave her there do not expertise her it is not worth it even as an archer main it's not worth it you don't need the expertise on her it is so expensive to do that and really like it doesn't move the needle that much for her so 5551 is a great value build and you pair her with YSG and boom there you go now you actually have two really solid archer marches and you are good to go now this again assumes that you got the YSG earlier and you expertise him and now you finally have a open field PVP use case for him which makes a lot of sense and this is why I said earlier the progression from early game to season of conquest is a little bit easier for archers than it is for anybody else now if you did not get the YSG then who do you pair Boudicca with right you could always go back and get the YSG at that point also by the time you get to your second Archer March like if you're watching this video in January you might not get here for many months right and by that time there could be another Archer commander that came out just like Herman Prime and you could slot him into your Boudicca Prime here or maybe he would be the primary or something like that or maybe you would switch them around and like whatever the new commander is would would go here or something like that right so just keep that in mind like that that could be the case so that's probably why you wouldn't go for the YSG much farther down the line he's really like if you're going to get him get him early but if you don't have him or you skipped him or whatever you're not going to be getting Art Artemisia right because you're not going to be expertise in your Boudicca Prime and you need her expertise to get rid of the self silence from our Artemisia also she's so slow like I know she's the same speed as YSG I get that but YSG is like it makes sense that you would have him it wouldn't make sense that you would have Artemisia as a new free-to-play player at this point in the game so really your other two choices are going for Nebu or going for Ashurbanipal I think Nebu is a bit of a safer choice but Ashurbanipal ultimately is probably the better choice in terms of actual damage output the reason I say Nebu is safer is because his March speed works everywhere so you don't have to worry about that uh, like getting caught on your own territory or something like that the only downside with this is I feel like you do kind of need to expertise Ashurbanipal to make him work in the open field which kind of stinks because a lot of his skills are rally based and this this is why like for me it, it does make sense if you're a free-to-play player that you know you would have the YSG from the early game you slap him in here and you're good to go or you'll have whatever the next Archer Commander is to replace that YSG and those are probably are your best options and once you get here you're pretty much done as an Archer main okay you've got basically your two best choices that you could have for Archer in the open field plus the best supportive possible infantry and cavalry army and then your fifth army slot you can use to reinforce garrisons reinforce rallies or go ahead and grab a rune leave that single troop army in the sanctuary or, or wherever you're you're grabbing the rune from because as a free-to-play player you will want to always be fighting with a rune if you can it's going to give you the stats that you really need and maybe it'll make up for the difference in stats that your enemy has as a paying player maybe they're too lazy to grab a rune and now you have 10 percent extra health which is going to be a big deal you can also use this open army slot to let's say farm a node to make teleport space for your allies right there's a lot of different things that you can do with this open slot that is still productive from a war perspective you don't have to be running around with five open field marches at all times especially as a free-to-play player and especially if you're using a majority of tier five you're it's way too expensive to do that and also like I said earlier in the video you probably don't have five sets of really good gear five sets of really good armaments like it's it's going to be you know there's a lot of systems that could be bottlenecking you and so I wouldn't really worry about your fifth army just run around with these and you are going to absolutely pop off okay next let's go over the equipment upgrade order for archers and here you can see the beginner build does have a purple piece and realistically until you get this purple piece just keep the I think it's the gray boots I think they give you some amount of archer stats you could basically just use that until you get the purple boots but this has three blue pieces blue weapon blue chest blue 
legs and it's going to give you the two green pieces for the helmet and the gloves the flame treads down here give you some amount of archer health which is why you want to prioritize that as your first purple piece and then eventually you actually just go to full purple and this is because archers have a four piece set it's called the revival set and it gives you a decent amount of archer defense not only from the uh i think the legs and the helmet but also the golden age as a weapon gives you a ton of archer defense as well you get some amount of attack from the chest and gloves here but ultimately you get a four piece set bonus and archers are kind of lucky they're the only troop type that has a purple set which is really cool so you get all that talented and you're good to go i mean it's pretty simple from there i would recommend replacing the chest and the gloves first i mean really you want to replace the chest first because this gives you a ton of archer health however uh, once you do one piece you lose the four piece set bonus right like there's no three piece set bonus so you might as well replace one other piece and uh, you don't want to replace you know the helmet or the legs because they give you archer defense and the gloves are kind of a side upgrade so realistically this would be your first two pieces that you upgrade to the legendary set pieces and then from there I would recommend upgrading the weapon and the boots the boots you're going to go from health to defense unfortunately but you are going to want to do this eventually because you do get the iconic crystals which you put into the boots then you can upgrade the tier and they will be better than the uh, health from the purple boots and of course you go ahead and get an upgrade from your golden age to the bow the set piece bow and now you have a four piece set bonus here for archers which is nice and then eventually you just go for the full six piece set now here's the thing about archers this is kind of like the simplest thing that you can go for like you just turn your brain off and just say okay just build the archer set like it duh of course you go with that right however you can build a second set and i think this is something that's really interesting for archers and really it, it works really well for archers and that's what i want to talk about here when it comes to your iconic upgrades right it requires blueprints and blueprints are going to be a really big bottleneck and for you as an archer player if you have two different armies and both of them need all this all set pieces you're really going to have a hard time upgrading that second archer set right you're going to focus everything on your first one what do you do for the second one it well if you have two dragon's breath sets like that's going to be really slow progress and so one other thing that you could do so you could build this for example as your first set and then for your other archer army you would build the hydra's blast okay this is the kvk weapon even more defense than the regular bow that you get the set piece bow okay for the helmet you would build the kvk helmet for archers ancestral mask of night again it's just more stats than the than the actual set piece helmet for the chest what you would build is the milky way the milky way is actually a very free to play friendly piece that you can get from your crystal keys and so making use of all these blueprints that you're going to be accumulating over time is going to be great plus you get 12 percent of your health which is insane it's basically i mean technically it's more health than the dragon's breath plate the downside is you you're not going to get any set bonuses from the dragon's breath so you know there's that but you would get the milky way chest piece then you would grab the ian's choice gloves okay which is archer attack and great news it's the same stat as the set piece gloves okay so there's not much of a downside here again besides losing the set bonus from the archer set okay it's literally half a percent more stats and again ian's choice comes from crystal keys so you're gonna get these blueprints these patterns eventually over time you gotta get lucky but you'll get them and then for legs what you would do here is you would actually grab the leadership legs the glorious goddess legs give you eight percent health which is arguably better than the archer attack that you get on the dragon's breath tacits anyway right like yes it's less stats but it's better stats plus you get two percent march speed for archers that's nice that's really nice I like that a lot and then for the boots you grab the glorious goddess boots here and this is going to give you six percent troop health again it is universal stats so it is lower than what you get from the uh from the archer boots right but you're trading that defense for the health which is actually kind of nice additionally because you're getting the glorious goddess set for your boots and for your legs you're going to be getting a three percent two-piece set bonus here okay so you'd be getting the two-piece set bonus for the boots and legs then you would just use the crystal key uh, gloves and crystal key chest piece and then the kvk helmet and weapon and that's actually going to perform technically it performs better than the full uh, archer set which we talked about earlier okay and this works out really nice for archers right because then they then you have like two distinctive sets and you basically don't waste any blueprints at all 
when it comes to your iconic upgrades between your two different armies which is really really nice now when it comes to iconic upgrades which order should you be doing the iconic upgrades for and the order for these is going to be very similar to infantry it's a little bit different for cavalry but when it comes to like your first iconic crystals you probably should put them into the boots and the legs and that's because they give you archer base health for both of these and that's really really important then beyond that the priority should be probably your dragon's breath bow or your kvk weapon this is because yes it gives you base attack which isn't perfect it's not ideal but as you progress these farther you're going to get bonus troop capacity and you're going to get two percent all damage on the map which is really nice additionally you can continue to work on your boots here because you get a little bit more troops which is nice but really the march speed and we talked about this earlier especially with like your boudica for example like you need that march speed desperately okay the march speed is so crucial here and even for the glorious goddess boots um it's going to be all the same stuff here okay it, holistic haste gives you one percent attack whereas this gives you one percent defense but really like the, at the end of the day it's the same thing right so you would go for the weapon and the boots first that's my opinion i think the march speed is so important here the next priority would probably be legs and head the legs are important because first of all again troop health plus you get one percent damage on the map and you're ignoring a little bit of enemy health you get bonus troop capacity which is nice same thing with the helmet here you get troop capacity you get your own health and you get another one percent damage to troops on the map which is really good finally you would go for the gloves and then the last piece you would do would be the chest piece and really you don't want to go past uh upgrade three for the chest because upgrade four is only for attacking rallies and garrisons which you're probably not going to be doing any swarming as free to play and you're certainly not going to be doing any rally or garrison leading as free to play so that's a really expensive investment so save this for last and really for the gloves like you get base attack it's not that big of a deal ignoring enemy attack it's not that big of a deal a little bit of troop capacity upgrades three and four are nice upgrade five is like not that big of a deal to be honest with you so that's why chest and gloves i would do these last because they just move the needle less and just to be clear all of that is also true for the other set that we talked about the makeshift set where we did the milky way and inch choice and all that stuff it's even more important to focus honestly on the kvk pieces because they give you even more stats but also you're going to be getting these blueprints pretty slowly right the good thing about this is that as a free-to-play player it is kind of guaranteed right like as long as you can get your two coins every kvk you're going to guaranteed get a blueprint every time which is actually kind of nice and since the helmet and the weapon both cost two coins yes the upgrade materials are going to be higher for the weapon but i would still recommend doing the upgrades for the weapon first you're just getting more stats for the same blueprint right like it both it costs two coins either way so you might as well go for the one that gets you more stats again it will cost more to upgrade but the bottleneck is probably going to be the blueprints anyway and with that being said guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video and let me know in the comment section below how do you feel about archers for free to play players and low spenders in 2024 I would love to hear from you guys and with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace